Our bodies are portals. Every time we drift into sleep, we step through a gateway into unknown worlds. Walking through the void, passing through darkness and light, as the atoms of the universe rearrange themselves into vision, prophecy, messages, and memories. With the ego left behind, we become the creator once again, weaving together the very threads of reality through our dreams. I am Stella Porta, Stargate, Incarnated Angel, Dream Oracle, Artist, and your guide and bridge between the seen and unseen. Welcome to the Dreamweaver Podcast. Gate, gateway, door, doorway, an entrance. All just another word for portal, taking you from one point in time to another even if you're merely crossing a physical threshold. Today we are looking at the energy of portals within a dream. Our bodies are portals, an access point, where we can live on the physical plane and touch the ethereal plane simultaneously. A spirit in a body, a bridge between worlds. Portals are very close to my heart, and I love talking and sharing about them, which, as it turns out, is part of my divine life plan. I received my name, Stella Porta, on January 19th, 2021, after meditating on how I would sign my artworks because my legal first, middle, and last name all have about nine letters each, which makes for a very long signature. So when Stella Porta dropped into my consciousness, I knew that I had to pay attention. And the beauty of it is that it merges my first and last name, Stephanie Della Porta. So Stella translates to star and Porta translates to gate. So Stella Porta means stargate, or we could say star portal. And as destiny would have it, my first and last name also means crowned one of the door or gateway. A lot of gates, a lot of doors. So my ability to access portals has been very present in my soul's history, which has been confirmed by others through many past life readings over the years. I believe that one of my soul's missions in this lifetime is to connect you to the stars within you and to activate a creative gateway that heals others as well as myself. This includes portals in the realm of dreams. In this episode, we're going to take the path of the stars to understand how portals influence us here on earth and how we access them and interpret them in the dream time based on my own experiences in the astral realm. The first recorded dream I have that mentions a portal is dated for April 4th, 2020, when the moon was in Leo, and I'll explain a bit later why I keep track of what constellation the moon is in when I dream. So I have many dreams in one night, and this night was no different. But in one particular dream, I was with a group of people that I didn't recognize from my waking life, which is usually the case. Perhaps one of you listening were there too. And we were standing in front of what looked like an ocean. There were what you could call aliens or extraterrestrial beings in the form of bright, colorful bugs that I don't think I have ever come across in this lifetime. There was a portal, a doorway, in the middle of the ocean that we had to step down into and I can't remember if I was being convinced or if I was the one convincing others that we shouldn't go. I think I was afraid of not coming back and being stuck wherever the portal led to. And this dream was in 2020 when the veils between the worlds completely shattered for me. And there was a lot of fear that I had to overcome during my awakening and energy that my body needed to physically acclimate to which I did talk about briefly in the previous episode. 
but at some point, I'm sure that it does deserve its own episode. Either way, I'm not afraid anymore and haven't been for some time now. I would love to re-enter that dream and go through the portal and see where it takes me. I have played with suggested dream re-entry techniques from courses that I've taken, but I just haven't found one that works for me just yet. But I'll definitely share the process when I do find one that works. Which could be in the Intentional Dreaming with Bee Shamanism course that I'm about to start. Or maybe this is my cue to create my own process for dream reentry. I believe that there are portals all over the earth, in the oceans, forests, mountains, pyramids, and it's a matter of remembering our connection, our keys to access these halfway points between worlds and these types of dreams offer us that chance. They say that if you can dream it, you can do it. Then there are portals in the stars. Or, we can call them stargates. Another dream I had two years later was on August 7th, 2022. The day before the peak of the Lion's Gate portal. And the moon was in the constellation of Sagittarius. And if you don't know what that is, the Lion's Gate portal occurs from July 28th to August 12th, but peaks on the 8th. And it's when the Earth, the star Sirius, and the sun in the sign of Leo move into complete alignment. The ancients were very in tune with the star Sirius as they believed it was the gateway to heaven and the home of higher vibrational beings. I myself am very connected to the Lionsgate portal and had the most incredible waking and dreaming experiences interwoven during this time. So, in this dream... I was looking through a window, possibly of a spaceship, because there were many windows and also many control boards, many different buttons, many different controls, and I was looking at the sun shining to the right of me. Without warning, the sun turned into a vortex, a portal, and the sky became covered in darkness. I couldn't see anything. It was all black. Then... Neon colors appeared everywhere in shapes of what looked like jellyfish floating in the air. It was a pure psychedelic scene. I've never seen anything like it. I remember saying to someone beside me on this spaceship or control center that we accessed another dimension. When I woke up, I remembered that the sun is also a star. I feel that we forget that a lot in our society because we rely on the sun as a marker of time, a distinction between day and night. This dream was showing me a truth. Our sun is a portal. A lot of cultures personify the sun as solar masculine energy and the moon as lunar feminine energy, a balance of opposites. This has always resonated with me. The sun is what I call one of our cosmic collaborators, a celestial energy that collaborates with us for our highest well-being. The sun, the element of light, can act as a portal for healing if we allow it. Dr. Fritz Albert Popp was a German scientist in biophysics who focused on biophotonics, And now biophotonics is the technology that deals with the interaction of organic materials with light, such as cells, tissues, and was one of the scientists that found out originally in the, I believe it was the 1970s, that there is a component to human health that is entirely based on light, especially when it comes to cancer. This was a very fascinating discovery. He was looking for the holy grail of what causes cancer. And what he found was that every carcinogen scrambles light at an ultraviolet range of 380 nanometers, which is just above visible light. So you can't see this because visible light stops at 400 nanometers. And this goes up to 380. 
but it's out there as it goes higher and higher. So as the wavelength gets higher, the actual distance of the wave gets less. So that's an important point. So what's going on here, it seems that light is being used by your DNA, that your DNA is storing light and it shoots out a little signal that the light is being used to telegraph information. Because our cells are in constant communication with each other. And the light tells the cell to stop reproducing. Because all cancer is, is a cell that doesn't know when to stop reproducing. It just grows and grows and grows, causing the mutation. What if the real basis of health is photonic? What if the amount of photons stored in your DNA is an indication of your level of health? We are beings of light. We store light for our health. Because, as Dr. Fritz Albert Pop's research found, was that when you're sick, the light reduces in that part of your body. The sun has codes for our cells to regenerate our bodies. The fine filaments of our bodies are actually covered with thousands of vitamin D receptors designed as antennas for the sun's rays. And I just have to point out that my left ear just started ringing, <laughs> which is an indication that we are on to something. This truth needs to come out. Vitamin D is a steroid hormone that illuminates our immune system and benefits every organ and cell. I mean, think about it. The sun is a star and we are made of 93% stardust. And let's look at the element of water for a second too. Water can carry an electrical charge, and we are also made of over 75% water. Dr. Jared Polak, who is a professor of bioengineering, describes water that is structured in our cells as a battery that can hold and deliver energy. Think of the trillions of cells in our bodies. We have trillions of little batteries within us. So when the water in the cell is hit by sunlight, the water splits into positive and negative ions. This is the same first step as photosynthesis, the same as plants. This separation of charge is stored in a cellular battery as potential energy. And now think about what Dr. Fritz Alberpop discovered, that when you're sick, the light reduces in that part of your body. So we need to give it more light. We are solar-powered humans, much like the nature around us. This is why I call the sun a cosmic collaborator. Our skin's relationship to sunlight is our human form of photosynthesis. Currently, we live in a sunlight-deprived society. Our mainstream sources of information have caused fear of the sun. And as a result market chemical products that are shrouded with the illusion of protection, but actually cause more damage when those chemicals interact with the sun. That is what makes it carcinogenic. It's not a result from the sun by itself, which is not surprising to me in a society that does not profit off of our wellness. Another way that you can use the sun as a healing portal of energy is by sun gazing. Sunlight enters our eyes and stimulates our pineal gland, which is connected to the hypothalamus where sun energy triggers vital, magnetic, electrical, and chemical reactions in the human body. All you need to do is simply look at the sun as it rises or as it sets. It's safe for your eyes to look at the sun within the hour after sunrise or within the hour before sunset because ultraviolet levels are at zero. I would suggest starting with 30 seconds every day to acclimate your eyes to the sun and then build from there. I personally haven't worn sunglasses for a few years now because the absorption of sunlight by the eyes is the most direct path of communication between the sun and our brains. When the full spectrum of light rays is intercepted in the retina, 
It is positively encoded in the brain. Wearing sunglasses and spending our days indoors blocks the healing collaboration of our sun, our portal for energy, our life force, our vitality. In astrology, this is what the sun represents. It's our zest, our fuel, our fire. It literally brings us life. It lights us up, which is exactly what our physical sun does for everything on this planet. I want to mention too that certain stars can also act as a portal for psychic energy. And I really, really have to share this with you. Okay, so Dr. James Spottiswood went through 20 years of research into ESP, which is extrasensory perception, remote viewing, telepathy, clairvoyance, really all of these laboratory studies of the human psychic function. What he was looking for was a universal time factor, something that could keep on showing up from time after time, which would help to establish a specific time of the day where your psychic ability would be enhanced or heightened. He wanted to see, for example, if at high noon, when the sun is right overhead, if you would be more psychic. Normally, we think of noon as being when the clock reads 12 p.m., but in astronomy, noon can also mean when the sun is at its highest point in the sky. So he took these studies over the course of 20 years and put them all together, but he was not able to find any particular piece of information that told him that there was going to be something happening on a particular day at a particular time. Until he looked at what's called side real time. And that's S-I-D-E-R-E-A-L. Side real time is the time that it takes the Earth to orbit once. Relative to the center of the galaxy rather than to the sun. That's a little bit different than the time that it takes us to rotate around the sun because the solar system is moving through the galaxy. Our relative position to the galactic center changes because nothing is ever static. What his research revealed was that at 13 hours and 30 minutes local side real time, meaning side real time for you wherever you are in the world, your psychic ability shoots up by 400%. Not 100, not 50%, not 200%, but 400%. Essentially, if you dream or meditate when the galactic core is directly above your specific location, your longitude, your psychic abilities will be increased by 400%. In the hour surrounding that time, it's heightened by about 200 to 300%, which is still incredible. That is to say that your powers of manifestation are magnified at this time of day. But due to the movement of the whole solar system around the galactic center, because remember, nothing is static, everything is always moving, this time of day shifts backwards by about four minutes per day. So it's not the same every day. This is called the side real motion of our solar system. Side real time is not just something you can have fixed at a certain point of the day. It actually does change from day to day. So if you're going to go looking for this, you need to keep checking it every day because it does change about four minutes every day. I use a free side reel app to keep track of this and I'll link it for you in the show notes below as well. So just remember that when this clock reads 1330, because it's in 24 hour time, that is when the galactic core is overhead specifically for you. The galactic core acts as a portal for you to access more of your intuition, your psychic power, your extrasensory perceptions, your dreams. If you are traversing the dream realm, or if you try to meditate, or if you try to give yourself or others a tarot card reading, 
or even if you try to get a psychic or intuitive reading from somebody else, they're going to be 400% more accurate during this time. If you can time it out with this 13 and a half hours or even the hour surrounding that timestamp, there's 20 years of data to back this up. Play around with this and have fun. If your local side real time is at night when you're sleeping, like mine is right now, keep a clock by the bed so that if you wake up from a dream, you can check if you fall within that time frame and see how it affects you in the dreamscape. It should open up the type of dreams that I categorize as multi-dimensional travel, which I talk about a lot more in episode three. So why does this work? Well, the center of the galaxy is a source of energy and when you align with the center of the galaxy, as you're standing here on earth and your physical position lines up with this center, there is literally a beam of cosmic energy that is streaming into you, magnifying any psychic, divinatory, intuitive connections that you are focusing on at that specific time. Once again, you are the portal, the channel, as above, so below. And to add on to this even further, let's talk about how the stars, the constellations, act as portals of energy for our civilization and affect our dream time, our dream experiences as a result. I was watching Matthias De Stefano's series on Gaia TV called Initiation, and he had an episode on how the zodiac, which are constellations, influenced and ultimately affected and shaped our society. Portals hold gravity and energy from every timeline in space. The stars are the spots where the energy of every portal pass through. For example, on this planet, we use 12 phases of time, the 12 zodiacs, beginning with Aries all the way to Pisces. This helps us to understand that every time the planet is going around the sun, each one of these 12 portals will imprint their stamp based on the energy that is flowing through. These stars give us their energy to create a civilization, a reality, a life according to the energy that flows through those stars. And this is what created the idea of the zodiac system or astrology. The zodiac system was a way in which we could relate to the stars to understand which energy was flowing through its portals. Whatever happens, however we feel through these portals in the sky, we are modeling that energetic information. We are the product of these pulses of energy from those stars. Every individual has many phases and many constellations within their own soul's imprint, but 12 of them were the most important for this planet that shaped our ideas as a collective. We on Earth are really touched by the energy of the sun and the moon. We have built our lives around the rotation of these two luminaries. Working by day, growing food by day, seeking food by day, exploring connections by day. And then at night we go to sleep. We created a kind of connection where you can feel the earth during the day. While the night is where you can feel the spirits, where you can feel other dimensions. I teach about this more in my new course, Astrology of the Heart, Your Moon Signs. And if you're interested in learning more, you can check it out by clicking the link in the show notes for this episode. But this is why I believe it's important to understand our stars, our constellations, and is also why I always put the sign the moon is in when I record in my book of mirrors, my dream journal, because I like to know what planets what constellations are influencing my dream experiences, my astral travels at that time. And at some point, I'm sure I'll do a whole separate episode on how to dream with the moon signs or how the moon signs, the zodiac affects the dream time. But for now, we're just going to focus on portals, one thing at a time. (laughs) 
Before I move on to my experience with interdimensional border agents in the dreamscape, I want to share a quick technique where you can use images as a portal or gateway. This will strengthen your imagination and your ability to access portals in the dream realm too. This practice actually reminds me of the first season of Witches of East End. I think it was the end of the first episode and the second episode. So if you watch that, you'll definitely understand what I'm talking about. You'll need a picture with a border or a frame. It can be of any genre, it can be abstract, realism, a landscape, a painting, a photograph. The important thing is that it has a border because we're going to use that as a doorway or gateway into the picture, into that realm. Personally, I like to use a tarot card, particularly the star card, of course, (laughs) but you can choose what resonates for you. You really want a picture that has some energy for you. Sometimes I even use one of my own paintings, especially a fine art print because there's that white matte border around it. But I would say that an abstract picture might make it a bit more challenging though, unless you have a really vivid imagination. Okay, so the picture that you have chosen is going to be your portal. Once you have your picture in front of you, you can begin by spending a few minutes carefully studying the picture. When you're ready, close your eyes and recreate the picture in your mind's eye, your inner screen. Open your eyes and examine the picture again and check how accurately and completely you were able to copy it from your visual memory. You can repeat this process until you are confident that you can recreate the whole image in your mind. When you're ready, sit comfortably with your eyes closed and follow the flow of your breathing until your body is fully relaxed. Recall the picture back in your mind and make sure you see it as a scene within a border or frame. You may see the picture hanging or floating against a black background or perhaps even against a wall. When the image is vivid in your mind, pull it gently towards you so that the scene is becoming larger. The backdrop falls away and your inner screen is now entirely filled by the picture within its border. The border now resembles the edge of a doorway. Step over the doorstep and enter the landscape beyond it. Enter into the picture. You are now free to explore and adventure in any direction that you wish. The landscape and any of its inhabitants will now appear to you as entirely real. Take your time to travel or linger, whichever way you are drawn. Allow it to come to life in your mind. Use your imagination as the bridge between the visible and the invisible. When you are ready to come back to your body, turn around and look for the doorway through which you entered. Approach the doorway and look through it into the room where you are sitting. You will see the room from a different angle than before. You may even find yourself looking at the space behind where you are sitting. You may even see yourself still seated in meditation or lying down. And if you do, it confirms that you have succeeded in shifting awareness beyond the physical plane. Come back gently through the doorway of the picture, back to your body, and full awareness of your physical environment and then you can open your eyes. To honor this experience and any insight you received, you can journal, draw, or even paint a sketch map of your journey. When you're ready to go about your day or evening, do something to ground yourself like stretch or drink water, eat a snack, go for a walk. 
I like to do this practice with sound healing music in the background, like a gong bath or crystal bowls, or even sometimes in silence. Find what works for you and let me know how your experience went if you tried this out. The last dream I want to share for this episode really blew my mind. (laughs) For the first time that I can consciously remember, I encountered what we would call on our planet border agents. On March 19th, 2023, so it was fairly recent, when the moon was in Aquarius, which is also my natal moon in my astrology chart, I had two dreams I can classify as dimensional travel. In the first dream, I was with a bunch of guys and I was hanging out. It kind of felt as if we were in a high school and I was in a female body and I was dribbling a soccer ball on my knees when it came towards me because the guys were playing. There was no sunlight. But I remember telling them that I wasn't from this world and that it was time for me to go. Everyone was sad, but I told them that I would hopefully see them again someday. I guess agents had figured out I was there and they were coming for me. So I flew up to the sky and I portaled out of that dimension. And then I woke up, I went to the bathroom, and then I fell back asleep. And then this is when my next dream happened. So there were two dimensional travel dreams, two portal dreams, In one night, that doesn't normally happen for me, which is what makes this experience so magical and so incredible, and I couldn't wait to share it with you. Okay, for the second dream, I was in a dimension where me and a group, and I say group, there was at least six of us in this group, were running from agents. Agents again, I know. Two dreams in a row. And in this dream, we would think of a place that we wanted to go. For example, a building across the street. And then we would portal to it by imagining drawing a circle and walking through it. So we were using our imagination in the dream to portal to another space in time. Me and another person got disconnected. We got separated from the others And the others were on the run with the agents hot on their tracks. I was in an apartment or a condominium and told someone who looked like a younger version of my current earth mom now, I told them not to worry, that I'd find the others. And my husband from this reality, (laughs) my waking reality, was one of the others. He was a member of this group. He's actually very much a part of my dreams. I constantly dream of him (laughs) and I'm not surprised because we are very connected. Our souls are very connected. We've had many past lives together, but that's a different story for another day. Okay, so he had left his phone behind and I had grabbed it. And the interesting thing was, is that it looked exactly like the phone he has in this reality, in my waking life. And as I was about to leave, agents showed up. I portaled to the top of the next building by doing exactly what I said, imagining the circle and then walking through it. And then randomly, I portaled to what looked like a ferry, like a sea ferry, a ferry, you know, where you transport cars and people from one piece of land to another. And this ferry had many levels, at least 50 But it wasn't on water, but it was actually deep in the earth surrounded by stones. Very strange, I know. This is what happens when you're interdimensionally traveling. And an agent found us. And when I say us, it was me and the other person who I actually don't know in my waking life. And we flew off of the bottom floors to the top. But it was as if we were flying downward, not upward. So I can also fly in a lot of my dreams in a lot of these different dimensions. Which makes sense because I believe that these dimensions don't have the same limitations. They don't have the same belief system that we do in this realm. They are able to access more of what we could call supernatural abilities. 
So when we flew down past at least 20 floors, the agent yelled something about being impressed that we could do that. (laughs) So I'm assuming that in that realm, whatever we were in, they didn't, it wasn't a natural thing to do. Flying was not natural. (laughs) We got to the top floor, and I say top kind of in quotations, because like I said, the way that this this ferry, this structure was set up, it was almost backwards, upside down. So we got to the top floor and we walked out into a forest that was surrounded with moss and sort of a stone wall. We were about to portal to the top when I said, look, there's stairs. (laughs) And the stairs were made out of stones. So we ended up walking to the top where the forest was and then looking down you could see this fairy-like structure at the bottom of this hole or pit. As we were walking a very bright red bird kept flying towards me. It would not leave me alone and I was starting to get annoyed and there were also bright vivid yellow birds in the distance and as we kept walking there was a chocolate brown horse that was near the edge that looked at me and started bringing his head towards me. I started stroking along the nose, but the girl I was with started taking over the petting, and I told her to be careful because the horse was backing away towards the edge. Luckily, the horse did not fall. The horse knew exactly where it was going. We kept walking around, trying to figure out how to find the others. We portaled back onto one of the floors, and there were a lot of people everywhere. And a door opened right at that moment and Justin, who is my husband, and the others walked through. Justin was wearing his hair in a ponytail and a bun and like his, the same winter jacket that he has now. He looked, he looked the same. He didn't look any different. And I thought he was my romantic partner, but I was talking to another guy with light blonde hair, which I was definitely not expecting because I... I honestly don't recognize this person, even from my waking life. But either way, I thought this person would be happy to see me, but he almost seemed angry. So I threw his phone, which I originally thought was Justin's, at him and walked away. And of course, there were still agents that we were all trying to not bump into. I'm not going to go into the rest because the rest was um, ended up being like a really weird love triangle. <laughs> between my partner, that guy with the blonde hair, and another girl who I also don't recognize from my waking life. But I did discover that I accessed a new healing ability within this dream, within this realm, that not only was I surprised about, but everybody else was also surprised about too. And once again, it came from using my imagination in the dream. That was such a big component of being able to portal within the dream, being able to heal someone else with my hands in the dream. There really is this deep, deep connection with imagination and our access to other realms, to supernatural abilities. Given that what I've been calling the agents showed up in two separate dreams in the same night, I believe that they are an interdimensional border control of sorts. The same way that countries protect their borders, these agents protect the borders between dimensions so that people don't travel between them and cause any interference in that world. And as Dr. Strange said in The Multiverse of Madness, Dreams are windows into the lives of our multidimensional selves. And I can confirm this with all of my being. I accessed another version of myself in another dimension. And I do this quite often. I actually accessed two different versions of myself that night. I am never one to say that your dreams aren't real. Or that your experiences are only a figment of your imagination. And what is imagination anyways? Do we really believe imagination is not a real place? That it's just a word 
we default to? To describe what we don't understand or to pretend that magic doesn't exist? Or that we're the center of it all and there's nothing else in the universe but us and this earth? Where do we actually think we pull all of our ideas from? The stories, the movies, the books, the art, the music, the villains, the heroes. Is imagination not just the flowing stream of our multidimensional memories that connects with the ocean of universal consciousness? The halfway place between manifest and non-manifest? The bridge between the seen and unseen? The portal between wake and sleep? Perhaps the dream is the reality and the waking life is the illusion. Maybe they're one in the same. Mirrors of each other. Mirrors of dimensions layered on top of one another. What do you see in the mirror? Do you recognize who is staring back at you? Do you even know that there's a mirror? There are portals above and below, within and without, in sleep and in wake. And the path of the stars will light the way.